Good morning, Connections! It is Monday, May 11th, 2020, and I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend and a great Mother's Day, and I am so happy you found your way back here to Connections and our devotion. Uh, Looking forward to getting the week started and our day started together. I am back live for the very first time since, I believe, the middle of April, so we'll make sure that... uh, I stay on track, but uh, yeah, it does look like my responsibilities with the Carney are uh, diminishing as uh, we are moving <clears throat> on through uh, the COVID-19 crisis. And speaking of, for those that have not uh, been included in on the loop, we are planning on getting back together. Uh, face-to-face on May 24th, which is two weeks from yesterday. Uh, have a lot of details and, and logistics to iron out. If you are interested in uh, attending church, then I need to hear from you. Dave is still uh, on duty most evenings at the Suburban. So if you are a resident of the Kearney Center living at the Suburban, then please let Dave know that you are interested in attending. Uh, We are going to be dividing ourselves between two Sundays uh, to keep our numbers uh, manageable and keep everybody safe. So we're looking for 30 people to sign up um, on the north side of Monroe. So that would include the Suburban and Seven Hills. And then we are also looking for that same number from folks that live in apartments uh, towards the west side, because that'll be the other area we can concentrate on. So if we end up having more on one side of town than the other, then we have to address, uh, adjust our, our transportation. So I need to hear from you, um, know that you are, are planning to attend. So the first two Sundays will be out of mirrors of each other. We will start back on May 24th with uh, the folks potentially from the north side and then May 31st picking up from the apartments. But that's not set in stone because I don't know how many people are planning on attend. But we are trying to keep that number around 30 uh, in attendance and a maximum of 8 to 10 um, volunteers to help us manage. So again, just uh, pull on Dave's ear. Um, I will make w- other ways available to you to reach out to us as well. Dave is working outreach for the church during the day and working at the Kearney Center as uh, one of the folks up there at the Suburban in the evenings. So um, I'll keep you posted on that front. Our devotions this week are going to be uh, based around Galatians, and we're going to start um, chipping away at this in Galatians 2 in just a a short bit here. But uh, if you viewed the the Wednesday, or the Wednesday, the Sunday broadcast, then you would know that we tracked Barnabas, the encourager, and his early impact on the church. And we landed ourselves in uh, Galatia, in a... um, a cautionary tale for encouragers that consensus and building rapport is important, but we have to make sure that we are are sharing the love of Christ and bringing the Holy Spirit into the 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 group and not morphing into something that um, uh, appeals to to the environment in the room and does not uh, stay on track with what what God mission is for us, what God desires. We are to transform, not to conform. So just, that's a that's a difficult line sometimes to walk as an encourager. And we landed right in the middle of a, a controversy in the early church, and that was, how do we include the Gentiles? And what should we, we require of them? Should there be an initiation? Uh, oftentimes, when we have an established group of people, when we're inviting new people in, we want them to earn their way in. And that is not the gospel. The gospel is a gospel of grace, meaning that we didn't do anything to earn salvation other than 
to pay attention and to respond as as Jesus poured out his grace and his mercy by dying on the cross and God re- resurrecting him uh, three days later. That's what opened the door. That's what creates the invitation into the, the banquet um, that we've been, been referencing a number of times over the last several weeks. So it is not something that, that is earned. But in the earliest days of the church, now we went from, on Sunday, we went from a snapshot of a very together church. Uh, they were together and had one voice and were taking care of each other's needs, and no one was in need because they were all on the same page. And then we get a little further into the history of the church, and we find that there's quite a bit of division, that there's a group called the Judaizers that want to make sure that the Gentiles are practicing all of the Jewish traditions and becoming Jewish in order to have a, a relationship with God. And Paul is found on the opposite side of that. And he is preaching a gospel of, of grace and mercy and, and centered on, on Jesus' sacrifice. So that's where we're going to continue to, to, to look at throughout the week. And we don't want to go too far along today. We want to set the table today, and then we will continue to explore how discrimination works its way into the church and what we can do, and perhaps areas that we need to look to as Connections Church to make sure that we're not falling into the same traps. But right out of the gate, I want to start not in Galatians, but in Romans, in Romans 2, 9 through 11, because this is going to, going to help us. We're going to reemphasize this on a couple of different occasions now, but this is going to help us understand uh, in other translations, not the NIV translation, it says that God is not a respecter of persons. Now, people trip over that uh, because God is love. God is is about you know the sanctity of life, and we can interpret that respecter of persons as something negative. It's really something quite positive, meaning that, that God does not show favoritism. And so in the NIV, it's properly translated into a better word, which is favoritism, meaning that God is, does not favor one over the other. That Jesus died for everyone, and that all are invited into the banquet. And then as we've talked about before, it is our responsibility to respond to that invitation and respond to God's grace and and allow him to do the work that he needs to do within each of us to become the men and women that he in, intended us to be from the very beginning. So we just want to take a quick stop in Romans and catch that passage out of Romans, where it says, There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does not does evil, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew, and then for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. Now, Romans is another great stop along our journey, and it certainly emphasizes that that no one has earned um, their way to heaven, and that that the, the Gentiles, born into sin and struggling in their sin, and um, have their difficulties. But then he turns to the Jews and and emphasizes that they're not perfect either, that there's no one that is is righteous among men. And this is is part of that argument that he sets up. He also reminds the Gentiles that the first children that that received the invitation were the Jews, and they have a very special place in God's uh, God's heart. And so this passage emphasizes that, that the Jews were first and that, that the Gentiles were, were adopted in. But beyond that, there is no favoritism. There is no, well, they were here first and you were here second. God is a God so loved the world. So I wanted to stop along our journey in Galatians to first set the table even a little bit more by emphasizing um, who God is. Now let's get to Galatians 2, and we'll start at the very beginning. 
like I said, we have much ground to cover this week, and we'll we'll get deeper into the the discrimination and some of the issues that were going on between the the Judaizers and and Paul as we uh, delve a little bit deeper. But I do want to start at the very beginning, and we're just going to take a a small piece today uh, to get us get us rolling for the week. Then, after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem, this time with Barnabas, and I took Titus along also. I went in response to a revelation. So we talked about the natural versus the supernatural a lot last week, and the sensitivity that Paul had to the Holy Spirit and to the Holy Spirit's guidance on where he was to head next, what chapter was was ahead of him. And that's how Paul ministered through his entire lifetime, was being sensitive to God and staying when God said stay and going when God said go. And this is one of those occasions. So Paul, he's now referencing from the day that, that he uh, was transformed by his encounter with Jesus when he was completely set against the early church and was on the wrong side of things, and Jesus corrected him and set him on a new path. He marks that day as 14 years in the past. And I love when when Paul does this because it also encourages us to kind of set in our mind, when did God really get a hold of our lives, and how long has it been? And it helps us recall that there was a time when we were on the wrong side of things, that we were not... uh, trying to live the life that that God had prepared for us, but we were we were warring against God. And so Paul always keeps that that uh, point of reference so that he can this is how long it has been. I have been journeying for 14 years and sharing the gospel at this point. It also emphasizes that he's not the new kid on the block and that he has been sharing the same gospel of grace for a very long period of time. For 14 years he's been sharing this gospel. But now, prompted by the Holy Spirit, he is going to return to Jerusalem and make sure that the gospel that he is preaching is the gospel that that was was preached by Jesus. And meeting privately with those esteemed as leaders, I presented to them the gospel that I preached among the Gentiles. I wanted to be sure I was not running and had been running my race in vain. Let me read that again. I wanted to be sure I was not running and had not been running my race in vain. Now, what Paul is is referencing is because there's a new gospel that's that's sprung up, and it's the gospel of the Judaizers, and it's, it's earning that... Uh, and one of the, the the pivotal things, we talked about the food laws um, in weeks previous, but we're talking about circumcision and the the need for the Gentiles to be circumcised. Um, that was one of the, the, the key points that the Judaizers were suggesting all Gentiles needed to, to accomplish. So, um, Paul has been preaching for 14 years and has not preached that uh, the Gentiles didn't need to do anything to earn uh, their place at the banquet, simply to trust in God and and to accept the invitation that that He has extended to them. So that's uh, Paul is 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 returning to the the very earliest part of the church to verify that he's been been sharing the correct gospel. Now, because of the Holy Spirit and because of, of Paul's, uh, you know, where Paul has grown his relationship with God, he is, is confident that he is sharing the, the proper gospel. But he is also making sure that the early church remains aligned to that proper gospel. And that's what we're going to explore for the rest of the week is how do we handle division within the church? And how are we going to, to make sure that we do not fall astray and lead people away from God when we're intending to lead God, people towards God. So let's keep that in mind, and that's the, t- the table properly set for our, our uh, tomorrow discussion 
on exactly what this division uh, was and, and how God went about healing that division. And I think I better turn my volume off. Welcome, everybody. There we go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we have received salvation through your grace, mercy, and love, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that when we were on the wrong side of things, that, that you sent your Son to die for us, Lord, as we were sinners and, and we were we enemies of, of your kingdom, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that, that there is no special requirements other than for us to, to, to reach out and, and grab hold when you extend that invitation to us, Lord. We are so happy and so grateful, Lord, that you have continued to invite our brothers and sisters into uh, the banquet and into fellowship with you. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the eyes to see those in need, and we can, can extend an open invitation without uh, ritual and without uh, requirements, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would, would set the table correctly today, Lord, that you would give us the eyes to see the true gospel and not be led astray. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to help us see those that are not in relationship as the children that you desire to reach and to save so that none should perish, Lord. Lord, we have a mission as the church, and we need to, to make sure that we remain compassionate, that our hearts remain soft, so that we can accomplish all that we've been, you intended us to accomplish from the very beginning. Lord, we pray for the end of COVID-19 as, as we begin to see the, the number of infected uh, decrease. We thank you for that, Lord. We still pray that you would just completely eradicate this. We also continue to pray for, for revival, Lord, that this would be the time when, when the world was silenced and they turned their attention to you, Lord. We are so grateful, Lord, for all that, that you have accomplished in us and all that you will accomplish. We love you, Lord. We can't do it without you. We won't even try. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Look, look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow morning. Uh, don't see any reason why. We won't be a live broadcast again tomorrow morning other than uh, me getting out of bed and getting over here early enough. But uh, I'm grateful for all those that found us this morning. I will make sure that this recording goes up on YouTube and it should stay uh, available to everyone throughout the day on Facebook. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bless you.